So, very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So, today we are going to study a very, very important topic. Uh, uh, that is uh, the meaning of the church. Which is the true church as per the Bible? Or what is the meaning of the church uh, as per the Bible? So, generally, uh, the church uh, means uh, a building. So, it should be like this, uh, as you see in the photo. You see, uh, the building uh, should be having a cone shape and uh, it should be having a cross upon it. And uh, you see, uh, there should be a cross on top of the church. A bell should be there. So, a dais should be there. A bench should be there where the people can offer prayers uh, and uh, uh, like these things. Uh. So, this is the general thought about the uh, church. You see, uh, everybody thinks that the church is this one. Okay, now uh, uh, let us read one verse, uh, you see, and that is in uh, Acts uh, uh, 7, 7, chapter 38 verse. Acts 7, 38, brother. Can anybody read, brother? Uh, Neil, brother, can you read Acts 7, 38? Okay, brother, wait a minute. X seven thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Mm. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively lively oracles to give unto us. Okay, so here uh, it reads that, uh, you see, uh, that there was a church in the wilderness. So this is actually speaking about the people of Israel when they were uh, journeying from uh, Egypt, you see, to the promised land. And there, this says, with, uh, when Moses was there, there was a church in the wilderness. How can there be a church uh, in the Old Testament? I mean, how can it be in the wilderness? You see, was it a building and uh, with a cross? So, what is the meaning of the church? Uh, well, let us read one more verse. Uh, Acts 8, 1, brother. Acts 8, 1. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Okay. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great per persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were scattered about throughout the re regions of Judea and Samaria expect, except the apostles. Very good. So here it says, and Saul was uh, consenting unto his death and that time there was a very great persecution against the church. Now if there was a very great persecution against the church, uh, do you mean that uh, Apostle uh, Paul uh, uh, you see, when he was Saul, he persecuted the building. You see, the building, the church uh, with the cross, uh, with the bell. Did he uh, go and, uh, you see, hit the building? Did he go and demolish the building? What is the meaning of the church? Uh, you see? And uh, let us read Romans 16.5, brother. Romans 16.5 also. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Romans 16.5? Likewise, read the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved, uh, Epintus, who is the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ. Uh -huh. See, there it says, greet the church which is in their house. Are? How can a building, a church, be in somebody's house? You see, church means a building, no? Church means a building with a cross and everything. How can it be inside somebody's church? So inside somebody's house. You see, usually a house is quite small. And it can be anywhere. But how can a church be inside a house? Then what is the meaning of a church in the Bible? You see, the word church actually comes from the Greek word ecclesia. You see, ecclesia means called out ones. That's what the Bible says. This is the actual meaning of the word church in the Bible. And it never refers to a building. 
but it actually refers to the people, the congregation who are gathered in the name of Jesus. Let us read 1 Corinthians 1.22. 1 Corinthians 1.22. Uh, Sunita, sir, can you read 1 Corinthians 1.22? ரியல் <laughs> of god which is at corintha that means uh, the church at corintha now what is it called as it tells to them that are sanctified in christ jesus the church meaning means those who are sanctified uh, by jesus christ uh, called to be saints uh, you see the called out ones from the world to be the saints of god uh, this is the actual meaning of the word church uh, therefore you see we see that uh, there was a church in the wilderness with what uh, when moses called god's people out of egypt they were uh, you see uh, called out ones uh, you see separate uh, people for the lord hence uh, there was a church in the wilderness uh, and uh, apostle paul persecuted uh, which uh, not the building but uh, the believer the followers of christ uh, you see they were the one who were called out uh, and uh, in aquila priscilla's house there was a church means what uh, you see dear brethren initially when the uh, church uh, the brethren used to gather they used to gather in small small places you see uh, they used to don't have any building and all they used to gather in small houses as we have cottage meetings no uh, small small places here and there the people and all used to gather there uh, you see huh and uh, similarly there was a lot of churches uh, in uh, so many places uh, each and every you see area is to have some church but they is to all have these gatherings in somebody's house therefore in romans 16:5 it says the house in their house you see the church inside their house so there was a gathering in their house you know when all this you see false belief the wrong conception that the church is a building came when you see constantinople uh, you see uh, constantine uh, roman emperor when he got uh, converted to christianity uh, that is the time that what happened uh, he offered everybody you see uh, jobs uh, uh, he offered everybody money he offered uh, various attractions uh, you see to convert to christianity because why because he got converted to christianity and uh, he claimed and he said uh, who converts to christianity we will give them you see a uh, job marriage you see money uh, houses all these things and all. that is the time that uh, the conversion idea came into picture and as many people began to come houses was not sufficient hence uh, they began to build big 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 uh, buildings called as cathedrals so dear brethren therefore if you see that is the time that uh, you see the wrong uh, you see idea that the church means a building came to the picture so until then you see the church uh, meant uh, you see the uh, people but uh, now they ask no uh, which church you going brother uh, which church we are going uh, uh, we are the church uh, where do we go you see so so this uh, thought uh, you see the false belief uh, you see uh, came into the picture you see uh, what does uh, apostle paul say uh, Uh, you see we are the temple of the living god we are the church of the living god so not that uh, you see we need to go to a temple okay we were two and three are gathered jesus said no so there my presence will be there so there uh, you see uh, the church uh, came into picture now okay now who are the church we saw christians the christians are the church now who are the christians you see who are the christians Hmm? earlier hmm, a christian is to be a very soft person if somebody slaps on her uh, cheek they would show the other cheek uh, 
Yeah, they were softly show their other cheek. That was the Christian now. You see? But today, huh, the Christians are totally different. You see? They wear clothes uh, which are forbidden in the Bible. You see? And they drink. You see? And they marry today somebody and tomorrow somebody else. You see? And uh, they do all sorts of worldly things uh, which are totally against the Bible. You see? And uh, uh, they call some themselves as Christians. Uh, but uh, this was not the original meaning of uh, Christianity. They used to be a very humble person, a very soft person, very helping nature, very good person. So that was, uh, you, uh, you see, the idea of Christianity. That was actually Christianity. But today, if you say that we are Christians, everybody looks very small upon that people. Why? Because these are the people who got converted for, you see, money. You see, for lust, uh, for sin, you see. You do sin and just go and confess uh, your sins. All your sins will be forgiven. Now. That's the meaning of a Christianity. You see, dear brother, and therefore, today, uh, many culprits uh, in the jail, uh, who are they? Uh, they're all uh, Christians only. You see? And even in the film, you can see uh, uh, very majority villain roles are given to whom? They're given to what? Uh, uh, Christians. Danny, uh, Rosie, Lily, Peter, all villains are only Christians only. So why? Because the world is filled up with false Christians. Therefore, dear brethren, today we are going to see who is the real Christian, who is the real church as per the Bible. And it's very, very important. This one we need to keep it in our mind. Dear brethren, see, in this, uh, you can see this divine plan. Uh, we already put it in your, uh, see, place also in Kathmandu. See, this uh, uh, first uh, is the first uh, world and the second uh, B, section B is the, uh, uh, you see, second world and the third is the third world. So, uh, if you see here, uh, uh, there is a small pyramid called as uh, A, you see, and uh, that plane is the plane N. So, above plane N is that uh, small pyramid A. So, this plane N signifies perfection, where Adam was created. Hence, that pyramid A is a perfect uh, structure that signifies the perfect man, Adam. But, you see, when Adam sinned, he fell into death. He fell down from the grace of God. You see, he fell from the image of God. He lost that perfection. He lost the grace of God. And he is fallen to plane R. R means what? The plane of death. So today, in Adam, the whole mankind are living in this death plane. So, uh, if somebody has to be uh, justified, if somebody has to come and have relationship with God, it is only through Jesus. Hence, you can see here, there is one more pyramid. Uh, G, small g. Uh, what is that one? That represents our Lord Jesus Christ. When he came to this earth, he came as a second Adam, as a perfect man. And Jesus gave his life as a second Adam. Hence, uh, you see, Jesus uh, uh, is the second uh, Adam. Uh, you see, dear brethren. Uh, so Jesus was a perfect man. Because of him, you see, uh, we are justified. So therefore, you see, uh, we can see in that uh, gospel age, you see, uh, there is a uh, different types of, uh, you see, Christians in the gospel age. Uh, so we'll zoom it out, see. So you can see here, plain N is the plain N is the plane of perfection. So all are sinners, all are fallen, you see, in the sight of God, all are lost the uh, image of God and the glory of God. So if anybody has to come back and retain, and get back that fellowship and relationship of God, it is only through Jesus. It is only possible through Jesus by believing in his blood. You see, that is the time that one, you see, is considered as righteous. That all his sins are covered before God. So today, you see, we are going to see the variety type of Christians. So you can see here, this is the gospel age. Gospel age means... The period where uh, Jesus and the apostles began to preach the truth to the whole world. And because of that one, many people came to knowledge of Christ. But here you see, 
there's a pyramid, the pyramid top is not there. Why? Because the pyramid said the pyramid is a church. And who is head of the church? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is in glory, is in heaven. So there we can see that uh, there are, uh, you see, four categories of uh, sections here. So these four categories of sections are you know, represents uh, the four, uh, you see, Christians, uh, the four types of Christians in this world. So in this gospel age, who are these four types of Christians? First of all, let us see this section Q. The section Q, if you see, they are not above plane N, but they are below plane N, attached to plane N. That means compared to the world, you see, Compared to the world who has fallen, eh, they are better. Because the world is totally uh, out of relationship with God. But they are somewhat better. They are attached to Christ. But uh, what does it mean? You see, uh, Q. Uh, you see, they are attached to Christ. But uh, they don't believe in Jesus. You see, they go to the church. You see, they worship Christ. Uh, but they don't believe that Jesus died for their sins. Uh, first of all, they don't have that conviction that they are sinners. Uh, and they don't accept Jesus as a personal savior. So they don't have real faith on Jesus. Uh, you see, so many celebrities, uh, so many big, big reverends, uh, so many bishops also might be in that one. Because they, these are the people who use the name of Jesus very lightly, very carelessly. They don't have real faith on Jesus, you see. They worship Jesus. They worship other gods also. When there is a uh, Mary festival, they worship Mary. Uh, when there is a Mari festival, uh, you see, Kali, uh, God. They also worship that God also. They think that both are one and the same. You see, they don't believe in the Bible. Uh, and uh, they don't believe that Jesus was born holy. But believes in, a, you see, evolution theory. Uh, they wear all these uh, Hindu uh, rituals uh, like uh, putting, uh, you see, uh, uh, kumkum, uh, bindi, uh, all these things uh, which are against the Bible. So these the, uh, Christians who lightly, you see, uh, use the Bible. Therefore, the Bible calls them as hypocrites. Hypocrites means what? Uh, uh, a, a type of uh, Christians, seeming to be Christians, uh, but they are not uh, Christians at all. Uh, these are disguised Christians uh, and they are not justified in the blood of Christ because they don't have personal relationship with Christ. Uh, they don't believe that they Jesus died for the sins. Okay? So this category, if you see, this category of Christians are there in this world, but they are not so much of a majority. Okay? But if you come a little bit higher above plane in, you can see a very big group. You see, a very good, big group, a pyramid, you see, of a, a P. Now, what is P? These are believers. You see, they are justified with the blood of Christ. You see, they have faith. They are, they are on the justification plane. Because of their belief in the Christ blood, their sins are forgiven. They are lifted up above the world. They are uh, imputed with the Christ, righteousness of Christ. Christ gives them the robe of righteousness. All their sins are forgiven. So they are sinless before God since now. Okay? And these are the people who are majority, you see, Christians in this uh, world. You see, uh, they have fellowship with God. They pray to God. And God listens to their prayer. You see, and these are the Christians who go to the church regularly. Believe in Jesus, that Jesus died for the sins. They have the conviction that they are sinners. They need Christ. They need Savior. And Jesus is the only Savior to save them. You see, they have so much of faith in Jesus. They believe in the Bible. They read the Bible. They offer prayers to Him. They sing praises to Him. You see, they have repented from their sin. Wherever there is Christian meetings, they attend that one. You see, huh? They give the time for prayer. They sing songs. Eh? You see, whenever uh, uh, offering is needed, they will give the offerings. But, uh, you see, they do all these things. Uh, they are good Christians. Uh, you see? But uh, they have their own ambition. You see? They have their own ambition. They have their own goal. They want to be rich. 
they want to be comfortable they want to study very well huh? and they want jesus to bless them they want that jesus should make them everything comfortable so they may have a you see huh? rejoicing life a very rich and a comfortable life you see they want uh, all the blessings all the miracles they want god to protect them huh? from all their uh, diseases all their problems they want god to help them you see uh, but uh, they don't do anything for christ they go to the church regularly they carry the bible they read the bible they sing songs that's all you see but they don't do anything for christ if they want money you see they will uh, just uh, uh, offer money that's all but uh, they don't do anything for christ that means uh, apart from giving money or apart from going to the church if you see what else they do you see dear brother na not much dear brother na you see huh? they want jesus to solve all the problems but they don't sacrifice you see they don't sacrifice you see they give off watching movies tv that's it but they don't take any risk for christ sake you see they try to quit sin you see quitting sin is not a sacrifice dear brother that one has to be very clear in our mind see try to live a godly life not speaking any foul language not harming anybody not doing any bad to anybody you see this is not christianity you see those things are to be done by each and every man candy in this world and no man has any right to violate any of these things and sin you see so do we don't have any right to sin because wages of sin is death if we sin we going to die so if you don't want to die if you are to relations with god then uh, just giving up sin is not sufficient so these are the christians who have faith but uh, their faith is not as per their actions this is not uh, practically in their life dear brethren so they uh, believe in jesus this is the majority group today no uh, good believers we tell no we are believers uh, we are pentecost any cost we believe we are believers in christ ha uh, good uh, but uh, is believers sufficient uh, dear brethren once what happened uh, uh, similarly when jesus was preaching in his life uh, majority of the people followed him thousand thousands of people followed him you know in such a way that 4000 5000 people followed him there was no place that one upon the other they trampled read luke 12 one 12 one luke 12 chapter first verse luke 12 chapter first verse joel brother can you read in the mean time when there were gathered together in innumerable multitude or people in so much that they trod on upon another he began to say unto his disciples first of all beware ye of the leaven of the pharisees and which is hypocrisies see what is a multitude of people innumerable in so much they trod one upon another one upon another they trampled you see they came it seems sir huh? you see so many people la you see so today also no if somebody does a prayer meeting a miracle meeting how many people will come thousands thousands you see very huge crowd will be there you see you can't even see how many people are there so many people will be gathered similarly in jesus there so many people gathered it seems sir you see huh why because they all believed in jesus sir now you tell me why did they all follow jesus sir did they all follow jesus simply like that you see they did not even permit jesus to have food why because jesus healed them jesus did miracles he solved all the diseases you see the entire city was at his door it seems read brother mark 132 brother anil brother can you read mark 132 and all the city was gathered together at the door okay. all the city was gathered at a to the entire city yeah so that means how many believers jesus had isn't it 
But uh, did Jesus believe them? You see, they all believed Jesus. That's the reason they came, no? Uh, city, entire city. Uh, trampling upon another. Thousands, thousands, four thousand, five thousand. But did Jesus believe everybody? That is the main thing, no? Uh, not that we should believe Jesus. Uh, that is also uh, there. But uh, very, very most important thing is that Jesus should believe us. Correct, no? That is what the Bible says. Huh? John 2nd chapter, brother, 23 to 25. Uh, Munna sister, can you read? John 2nd chapter, 23 to 25. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles when he, which he did. Ah, one minute, sister. See? Many believed Passover means what the city used to be fully crowded. You see, many believed in his name. How many believed? Two, three thousand. Many, many believed in his name. Why? Because of the miracles. Believers, you see, dear brethren. Similarly, today now there are so many believers, they believe in Jesus. Why? Because of the miracles. Jesus did. Today also now, thousands of people, you see. If you go to churches, so many people will be there, 60, 70, 100, 200, 300, you. Why? They are all believers. They believe in Jesus. Why? Because of the miracles which he did. But did Jesus believe them? Continue, sister. Huh? But Jesus did not commit himself onto them because uh -huh. he... But Jesus... Did not commit himself unto them. How is this possible? They all believe Jesus. So Jesus will definitely believe them now. But what does the Bible say? Jesus did not commit himself unto them. Why? Continue, sir. Huh? Because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of men. For he knew what was in man. Because he knew all men. Needed not anybody should come and give certificate about anybody. He knew what was in man. Everybody was willing to benefit. So Jesus did not believe them. So what is important here, Buddhran? Not believing. Just believing. You see, just carrying the Bible and going to the church. Just singing songs. Just spending some time. You see, in attending meetings. That is not sufficient. What? What is required? You see, what more is required? Just giving of sin, just not seeing movies or cinema or listening to any worldly things or seeing or reading the worldly magazines. Just leaving of this is sufficient. Dear brethren, so many people have done this one. So many people do. You see, they leave off their family, everything. They go desolate, alone in some high mountain and sit and do. You see, Huh? That uh, sannyasis. Huh? They meditate now. Leaving everything very stubborn. Huh? They also sacrifice. No? Huh? They also live. No? Leave sin. You see? Uh, keep the mind concentrate on uh, uh, their God's angle. Huh? Is, is that sufficient? Does it mean that they become, uh, uh, you see, uh, disciples of Christ? No. That is not at all sufficient. Jesus once clearly tells the condition of discipleship. Let us read Luke 14, chapter 25 to 27. Luke 14, chapter 25 to 27. Uh, Sunita Ashta, can you read? Luke 14, chapter 25 to 27. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren, and sisters, yeah, and his one life also. He cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Very good, sir. See, it says, uh, uh, there went great multitude with him. Very, very large people. But what did Jesus do? Suddenly he turned and said, you are all following me. I know you are following me for benefit. But uh, if any man uh, come to me 
If any man wants to be my follower, he tells the condition. Oh, what is the condition? Huh? He should hate his father, mother, wife, children, brother and sister. What brother? Hate. Huh? We should hate. Huh? Actually, hey, the word is loveless. You see? Huh? You should love the Lord more than your father, more than your mother, more than your wife, more than your children, brother and sister. Or else you can't be my disciple. See? Father and mother is very easy. Once uh, old, uh, they will die. Yeah? Or else uh, your brother or sister will take care of them and uh, somebody will leave them or uh, put them into home for the aged. You see? So that's uh, quite uh, easy. Huh? What? Uh, father and mother uh, leaving them. Then next comes uh, what? Uh, brother and sister. Uh, brother and sister, if they get married, they will get separated. Uh, that's not an issue at all. Then who is left over? Wife. Husband, children, oh, now is it possible to huh, give importance to Lord than the husband and wife? That is the very difficult part. You see, but to sacrifice and leave husband and wife, you see, and children is very difficult. What is the meaning of this one? You see, huh? that means uh, not that you should hate them, leave them, you see, and uh, come before Christ. Uh, no, it tells, love the Lord first. Like for example, if there is a meeting, if there is a Bible meeting, you see, and if there is a, uh, you see, uh, wife's, uh, sister's, uh, brother's uh, marriage, eh? what, uh, to which one you will give importance? Uh? You give importance for the Lord's meeting or for your marriage or birthday. Oh, my wife, uh, she has called me, wife, sister's, uh, Oh, yes, she has called me. To what thing we are giving importance to your brethren? So that is what it takes. Huh? You see? Deny yourself. That means hate yourself. Huh? You see? Huh? When there is a... Uh, when you need to take a Bible class, when you need to do something for the Lord, it causes pain to you. It causes trouble. It's not so easy. But yet... Uh, you do it for the Lord's sake. That is denying yourself. You see? Denying yourself. Carry the cross. Carry the cross means what? Take responsibility. Take risk for Christ's sake. You see? Are we ready to take risk? Dear brethren, you just think it over. How many people, how many Christians are in this world who are ready to take the risk for Christ's sake? You see, carry the cross. Jesus carried the cross, little cross. Was he speaking of the little cross? No. A little cross was a symbol of the responsibility he took to save the whole mankind. Are we able to take so much of responsibility for Christ's sake? You see, there are so many truths. What you listen? You see, ah, the soul, hell, ah, three worlds, Daniel second chapter, how to study the Bible, ransom for everybody. You see, Deny yourself. Deny the old false doctrines. You see? Carry the cross for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake, trust this one. Have faith on this one. And next what? Huh? Come after me. Follow the footsteps of Jesus. Different followers. Not believers. Therefore Jesus said, if you don't deny yourself, carry the cross and follow me, you cannot be my Disciple. So to be a disciple of Christ, what we should do? Not just believe, but we should follow his footsteps uh, practically. Dear brother, how Jesus walked, you see, with a sacrificial life. Huh? Like that, uh, we should do a sacrificial life. No, sacrifice is not uh, something which is uh, ours, something that which belongs to us. You see, that one we need to. Give it for the Lord. You see? Is it so easy? Yeah, it's not so easy. Like for example, imagine eh? if we have uh, something which is precious to us. You see? Let it be anything uh, related to our uh, personal things. Uh, let it be wealth. Uh, let it be health. Uh, let it be book. Uh, yeah? Let it be money or anything. You see? Uh, that's very precious to us. Uh. We have only a small thing. Uh. 
You see, but that one we lay aside for the Lord's sake. That is sacrifice. You see, dear brother, today there are so many parents, you see, when they lose their husband, you see, what they do? Do they marry? No, they would be having children. They would sacrifice their life. You see, why? They would earn, you see, work day and night. Why? Because they love the children. They want their children to have the good life. They struggle a lot. You see? And, uh, yeah, in instead of they eating good food, uh, they sacrifice that good food for whom? For the children. Why? They want the children to have good. Uh, so, that is their right. They can have it. Uh, but uh, they are leaving it for the children. This is sacrifice, dear brother. And this is the same thing we need to do for Christ's sake. Uh, what does it mean? Is it going to the villages? Is it going uh, to the remote places and do, you see, uh, hospitality work or build a home for the age or have a nursing home or a school or an orphanage? No, dear brother, no, none of these things. Jesus never did any of these things. Did he go to villages and, uh, you see, treat all the poor? How many people did Jesus give money? To how many people did Jesus give clothes? Tell me one example you show me. No, not even one. How many homes for the age did Jesus build? You see, once somebody came, huh? please dispute a case between me and my brother. Jesus told, who made me authority between you brothers? How many schools did Jesus start? Yeah, or opened? Jesus himself never went to any school. How many, you see, poor kids did he adopt? Dear brother, how many hospitals did he open? <laughs> Tell me. None of these things. So these are, this is not sacrifice. You see, we should see Jesus. You see, if you see Jesus, we'll come to know correctly what did he do. You see, on plane end, you can see the G. That is Jesus. He was born on this plane. You see, and Jesus, when he took baptism, he came a little bit higher on the plane M. That is a plane of sacrifice. You see, he offered himself to God. He was a perfect human being, no? Huh? Equal to Adam. You see? What all rights Adam had, same thing was with Jesus. He could have lived comfortably on this earth. He could have enjoyed everything without committing any sin. See? He himself says that uh, I am wiser than Solomon. Solomon was so wise that there was no war in his kingdom. For 40 years, you know, what's the value of uh, gold in Solomon's kingdom? The Bible says it was the value of a stone. No value, it was so cheap. It was like thrown like stone systems. So much of gold uh, Solomon had. Uh, imagine if Jesus would have used that wisdom in the worldly way huh, to develop a big business, a big establishment, earn a lot of money. Jesus could have done that one. You see, there was nothing wrong. This is nothing wrong. That's a human being, right? He could have done it. If he would have done, then he would have been the world's richest millionaire. Nobody could overtake him. You see? He had all rights of a perfect man, dear brother. He had the right to live comfortably, eat luxurious food. You see, delicious food. You see, very super food. Enjoy his life. Spend money, go here, there, roam, everything. But did Jesus do? No. He could have bought expensive things, you see, poor costly apparels. He could have done it one. He was like an ordinary man. You see, huh? he did not live a very enjoyed life or a pleasurable life. Huh? You see, huh? dear brethren, Satan is like that. He offered uh, Jesus that you just bow down to me, I'll give this entire world to you. You see, no, but that was not God's will. What was God's will? That he should die on the cross for the entire mankind. He sacrificed these rights. The rightful things he sacrificed, not sinful things, dear brethren. So similarly, sinning, leaving sin is not a all a sacrifice. So we have to, you see, offer ourselves. You see, we have to sacrifice ourselves. See, there, see what Jesus did? Hebrews 10, chapter 5 to 7. Hebrews 10, chapter 5 to 7. Uh, Romy, sister, you're there? Can you read? Is it okay?
Okay. Joel, brother, can you read? Roma, Hebrews 5, 10, chapter 5 to 7. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wholeness, not but a body hast thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifice, for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said, I law come in the volume of book is not written of me. To this thy will, O God. Mm, see, God did not desire a burnt offering. Though I had no pleasure in burnt offering. But uh, you have said, I have prepared a body for you. You see, lo, I come in the volume of book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. In the book it is written to do thy will, O God. I am coming to do thy will. That was the mind of Christ. Similarly, you know, who is a Christian? Not believer, the followers of Christ. Follower means what? Offer their bodies as a living sacrifice. Read brother. Romans 12, 1 brother. Huh? I beseech you before, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, see, uh, I beseech you, I request you, brethren, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. What we are offering our dead body, it is not any great thing. It's very reasonable, very simple thing. Did so only if you are not able to offer, then what we are going to offer to you, brethren? Therefore, you see, in the gospel age, believers are not important. Uh, you see, what is important? Uh -huh. What did Jesus say? Many are called, few are Chosen. Read, brother. Matthew 22, 14, brother. Uh, uh, Hanir, brother, can you read Matthew 22, 14? Okay. 22, 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. See? Many are called. Yes. Many are called to believe in Jesus. Sir. But is it sufficient? No. In that one, only few are chosen to follow Christ. Dear brethren, therefore, there are two types of Christians. One is hypocrite, we see. Yeah, then next what? A big group of called out ones and a small group of chosen ones. Now you tell me, uh, what do you want to believe? What do you all want to be? Do you all want to be believer of Christ or follower of Christ? Tell me. You all want to be believer of Christ or a follower of Christ? You just want to believe in Jesus uh, do you want to follow the footsteps of Jesus? Oh, nobody wants to follow. 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 Very good. Uh, Anil brother? Sunita sir? Yeah, brother. Follow. Uh, Joel brother? Brother, follow. Uh, follower. So, believers is not sufficient. Sacrifice. Give out our preferences. You see, our desires, you see, our aims, our ambitions, for what? For Christ's sake. That is what the real Christians are who follow the footsteps of Jesus. Uh -huh. What did Jesus say? If you have two cloaks, give one up to the other who doesn't have. If somebody asks you to walk one mile, go with him two miles. You see, if somebody slaps on you, show the other cheek. That is the real Christian, dear brother. Now you tell me, how many percentage of Christians are like this in this world? Huh? Are everybody like this, brother? Like what the Bible says? Hmm? Tell me. No. 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 Ah, that is the reason. The church is a little flock. You see, Jesus once uh, healed ten lepers. Uh, Luke 17 chapter it comes. Ten lepers came and shouted, The Lord have mercy on me. Jesus told, Okay, go. Go and show it to the high priest. As they were going, what happened? Uh, immediately they were healed. Imagine within seconds uh, the disease were cured. All the skin muscles were eaten. Began to grow like that only. 
Imagine what great miracle, no? Huh? Ten people on the spot it was healed. How many people returned back and gave glory to God? Huh? How many people returned? How many people turned back to God? Read one. what Jesus said. Huh? How much, brother? One. Very good, Amar brother. Only one. You know, Jesus very sorrowfully said, is this only one person that is uh, coming back to give glory to God? Huh? Read. Luke 17 chapter, brother. Luke uh, 17 chapter, verse 17 and uh, 18, brother. Luke 17 chapter 17 and 18. Sunita Astor, can you read? And Jesus answering said, Where there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Okay, this is the condition of Christianity today. 99.99% they don't turn back to God at all. Only one benefit, once they receive the benefit, that's all they forget God at all. Only when they have problems, they only will come back. No, we should be like at one percent. That is what Jesus is looking. So we have still four parts of the church. So we will be coming and seeing more details in the next week. Okay. So any questions? Any doubts? Anybody is having? Anil Badar, Sunita Star, any questions? No, brother. Okay, Anil brother? No, no brother. Okay. Uh, Joel brother? Munna sister? No, brother. No, brother. Okay, Romi sister? Amar brother? Any questions? Any doubts? No questions, brother. Good. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, so...